So according to Strava, I trained 532 hours in 2022. And I tried a lot of things. I did running, especially on trails. I tried mountain biking, lots of swimming in the pool. I dabbled in ski mountaineering. I relearned Nordic skiing. I did some ski expeditions in the in the Arctic. I continued climbing. I was still crap at yoga. And from time to time, I lifted some weights. And as I was going through all that training data, I was also writing down what I learned this year. And then it hit me. I should, I should, I should definitely share those key takeaways with you guys. Because these are things that will most certainly improve my and your performance in 2023. So in no particular order, let's give it a go. This uh, increase in vertical meters is a bit too much for my body. I think in training, one of the highest priorities, if not the highest priority, is to just not get injured. As long as you're able to train, you can progress. But the minute you get injured, you're actually taking steps backwards. And you can easily erase a year's worth of work by being injured for a month, easily. And then to not get injured, I think it's very important to understand that most injuries are not due to some deficiencies in your muscles or, or poor running form. They are due to training errors, you know, ramping up volume too fast or starting high speed intervals way too early into the season or just being very infrequent with your training. And it took me a long time to understand that. I've spent so many hours trying to improve my body to take on more volume, even though I should just be more patient <laughs> with my training and not ramp up the volume so fast. I've now been um, struggling with a knee injury for the past three months or so. Three months of interrupted training. I've been to three different physios. We went to an ultrasound where they found that there is some fluid, some inflammation, and it's just not going away. I've, I've stopped running, stopped cycling, only swimming at the moment, and uh, it's been pretty tough. So I can tell you, you do not want to get injured. It's not fun. <sighs> oh. Next item on the list. Most of us would be better off focusing on the basics. Like the moment you go online and start reading about fitness, you're bombarded with the latest and greatest interval workouts to achieve this and that, and the top isotonic apneic energy gels for your next marathon, and the best massage boots of 2022. But all that stuff is pretty much trivial for most of us. For most of us, myself included, it's just about getting the basics right. Have you trained consistently over the, the full year? How about year over year? You have? Cool. Have you slowly increased your volume? Do you have enough frequency? Are you sleeping eight hours a night? Have you optimized your nutrition? And if not, those are the things you should be working on. Not the latest massage boots. The way I like to think about it is that the basics will get you to 95%. And only for the final 5% will you need all those other things. If you want to progress, you cannot do it all. See, I'm one of those people who would do it all. I would like to do all the damn sports if I just could, if I had time and my body could take it. But the thing is that progressing in any one sport requires frequency. I would say at least two times a week, maybe better to do it three times a week if you want to see progress in any, any sport. And so once you go above like three sports, it starts to get really, really hard to fit in that many training hours in the week. And even if you can fit all of them in, it's most likely that there are some interference effects between those sports. Like let's say you're doing climbing and swimming. If you do a hard climbing session, your upper body is trashed. Then if you try to do a swimming session, it's not going to be as good as without the climbing beforehand. So even though I would really like to do all the all the sports, I've come to realize that there is an opportunity cost to every sport you add to your repertoire, your your training regime. But on the other hand, if your goal is not to progress to a high level in any any sport, I think it's probably the most enjoyable way of training to just try a myriad of sports and to gain a base level in many sports. So it's well, it's just based on your goals. Do you want to be competing in a, at a high level in a sport or do you just want to enjoy it? And now here's a bold idea. You should either get very deep into training data or not use it at all. Whoa. Yeah, 
Well, let me explain. Um, the more you read about it, the more you realize that there are so many variables affecting your body when you exercise. And even with the, all the technology we have nowadays, it's close to impossible to let, let alone track all those variables, but then to be able to analyze the interaction between those variables. But of course, uh, it is very motivating, even if you just track some data, it can be very motivating to see all that data. But I'm just saying that if you're trying to make estimates of your physiology based on the VO2 max you're getting from your uh, watch, or you're just uh, looking at your heart rate on an uphill run, you need to know that there are so many variables that could affect those things that you can't really draw any conclusions from that, that one piece of data. Three sports you should try in 2023 are mountain biking, climbing and Nordic ski touring. I had not done a lot of mountain biking before 2022, but this year I did some very long rides out in the nature and I absolutely fell in love with it because it has all the benefits of, of trail running. You get to see nature and you have that exercise induced euphoria in in the nature. It's so awesome. But also it doesn't have the high impact that trail running can induce on your body and that can lead to injury. And you get to see more nature with mountain biking than you do with uh, trail running. Climbing on the other hand, it's it's just a, it's a totally different sport. It's it's problem solving. It's a very social sport because usually you spend like many minutes between climbs just waiting to get rid of the pump and that time you usually socialize with people and it's even more fun with friends and climbing gives you a feeling of achievement almost every time you climb and the progress is so so visible visible <laughs> visible in climbing it's amazing try it and then finally of course this, the third sport is a bit more um, difficult to access for most people but if you have a chance to do some sort of a Nordic ski touring or in the States, you would probably say backcountry skiing trip in a safe environment, I would definitely encourage you to do that. And I'm, so I'm not talking about touring mountains. I'm talking about mostly skiing on the flats out there in the nature in the midst of winter. Of course, you need a lot of gear for it. Most of the gear you can rent. And for the first time, you might want to get a guide to really learn the basics. But it is... If you if you do okay if you do get all that done and you go out out in there it is the most surreal environment to be in. When we were skiing with Atili in Kungsleden, uh, I felt just more content, more stress free than I did throughout 2022. And uh, I cannot wait to get back on those winter trails. It is if you can do it, definitely. So as I said, I did a lot of different sports in 2020. I also did all kinds of crazy experiments with my body relating to sleep, cold exposure, heat exposure, all that stuff. And it just reaffirmed my belief that, well, it's not even a belief, it's true, that your body is extremely adaptable and it actually adapts faster than you might think. Like if I now told you that within a year's time, you could definitely swim 20 minutes in ice cold water or that you could climb Mount Everest with the proper training and gear. Or that you could definitely cycle around the world. Would you believe me? Probably not. But th th that's that's how it is. Your body is extremely adaptable to the stimuli you give it. And I think it's a very powerful thing to understand. Because then there basically are no limits for what you can do. If you give it time and proper training. It's like, damn. But yeah, that's about it for me. Uh, please let me know in the comments what uh, what you learned in 2023. No, 2022. If someone has already learned something in 2023, let me know. Because so we have someone from the future in the comments.